This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Here's an interesting question. It's going to get the internet a buzz. Joe wants to know what's your take on Enzo and Cass. Those dudes might've been the most over talent to come from NXT. And it feels like they were gone within two years. Well, that's fine to be, you know, over at NXT at that time. There was no NXT television show. I don't believe yet. Was there? No, but they they were over on the main roster. They were selling merch and the crowd was responding. And then. I mean, the, the, the narrative online has been, it was sort of their, uh, dealing with this fame or celebrity or outside of the ring, uh, amongst the locker room or in real life. That was the issue. Not necessarily them connecting with the crowd, or at least that's the rap online, but I wasn't there. What the hell do I know? What, what happened? Why don't you think they, uh, are still with WWE and selling a bunch of merch and doing their thing? Well, I mean, that's fine, but. When you come up to the main roster, now you're starting to have, you know, your own TV now. Now, the ones that are, Conrad, you can take 200 people in a crowd of 10,000, and if they choose to be heard, they sound very loud. I'm talking fans scattered around the arena. If they're chanting the same thing, 200 people can make a lot of noise. And they really can't. And uh, the fact is, they did have that following. They came up to the main roster. They had a match or two. uh, And the people were getting with the promos and getting with all the things. But the second they put Cass in in the program with Big Show, he quit listening. And I know because I was the producer of that match. And here's the giant willing to put this guy over. And he was fighting us every step of the way. Same thing. I had Enzo and I had him in some, uh, 205 matches on house shows. And he was just doing every stupid thing you could do to make a baby face look foolish. And it was some of the Lucha guys that he was working with and they didn't know the difference until I started pointing it out to them. Um, And I think the fact that you don't take the guidance from the people, the producers there that are there to help you and know a little bit better than you do what's going to get over and what's not, when you quit listening and you just decide you're a bigger star than they are a uh, assist to your uh, success, and you're going to do it your way, that's when you get started heading downhill. And uh, uh, they made some mistakes, and it didn't take very, very long before they had heat in the locker room. And then they started to fall apart uh, out in the ring as far as production, and then they started to get heat with the office. And that's what happened. They self-destructed. Mm. Question from uh, Brett with one T. He says, what are your thoughts on Finn Balor? I felt like he came in with a strong push to begin with, but then it died off once he got hurt. Yeah, just bad timing for Finn. His first big match, South Rollins, right? He got hurt. Yep. Timing was terrible. I mean, they went out and had a very good match and he got hurt and it, once you get hurt and then you have to start over again and start your build and all those things. And, um, it's just hard to start over. And, uh, I think he has a lot of talent. He's unique, does a lot of good stuff. Um, but I just think he ran into that, that issue of getting hurt right away. And that's kind of stalled his career probably. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.